Good morning. Good to see you this morning. Um, want to highlight a few announcements. Um, the uh, the, Mich the Michigan Annual Conference is coming up, and I have something in here about being able to donate to help um, buy the rice meal bags that pro that can provide up to six uh, six meals for people. The last uh, the last time we did this, most of them were sent to Ukraine. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work, um, but if you want to give a donation towards that, use your designate. Um, uh, part on your offering envelope, and I'll find out from the conference how uh, how that'll work. From with that, I think we will. Uh, I, I will turn it over to Carol. Diane, Diane uh, isn't able to make it to church, so the choir will be singing without a director today. And Greg is our Greg is our liturgist, but uh, Carol will start us out with a prelude. Thank you, Carol. Good morning. Good morning. Would you please join me in this morning's call to worship? It's printed in our bulletins. We have come this morning to worship together. Different people, different lives, different histories. Yet we are all children of the same God. Created lovingly by the source of all life. Different people, different lives, different histories. Yet we all have one teacher and savior, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the living word of God. We, we have, have come, come to worship God, God Father, Father, Son, and, and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. And would you now also please join in the singing of our opening hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. It's number 66 in your hymnals and it will also be projected on the screen.
Move in and among us as we seek to worship you in spirit and in truth. May we feel your love. May we feel your peace. May we feel your presence in this hour and beyond. We pray in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who before he ascended to return to heaven to be with you, said to us, Lo, I am with you always even to the end of the age. Amen. Our epistle lesson for this morning is taken from 1 John chapter 4, uh, verses 7 through 21. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and, we, and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Here concludes the reading from the epistle. We turn now to the Acts of the Apostles, a few verses from there. While Peter, and this would have, uh, well, forget the setting. <laughs> While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message he would, had been preaching. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles, on non-Jews. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God, and the speaking in tongues would have been using, I, 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 I uh, would have been using a praise language that. Uh, is really unintelligible unless someone interprets it. It wasn't speaking in some other foreign language, but this praise language. And so the Jews overhearing this, uh, you know, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. And then Peter said, surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Here ends the reading. So 
before they, this, this was a, one of these unusual situations in which they were baptized with the Holy Spirit before they were baptized with water. And they were baptized with the Holy Spirit because they heard Peter's message, they heard him pre preaching the gospel, and they believed. And upon believing, they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, became part of the family of God, and that's the, that's the passage um, that's a, the passage that tells us about that and celebrates that fact, that uh, not only Jews are welcome in the kingdom of God, but all who believe in the name of Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So I invite you to remain seated. You remain seated as we, as we sing, Help Us Accept Each Other, number 560. Continuing with the epistle, still in 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands and his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. Uh, one of the churches in the United Church of Canada, I believe, is the United Methodist Church. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Aren't those wonderful truths? 
I invite you, uh, and they can give us assurance of, of, uh, of God if we believe them, and in celebration of that, let's sing Blessed Assurance number 369, if you will uh, stand, if you are able to join in that song. Jackie uh, Robinson was the first black man to play Major League Baseball. And during his first season with the Brooklyn Dodgers, Jackie encountered a lot of racial hatred and, and harassment uh, on the field and from the stands. Pitchers threw fastballs at his head and runners spiked him on bases. Racial slurs were called out to him from opposing teams and even from hometown fans. At one game in Boston, the fans were giving Jackie a particularly hard time with violent taunts, vicious taunts, excuse me, after he had made an error. But then one of his Dodger teammates, a southern white man named Pee Wee Reese, called a timeout and walked from his shortstop position to Robinson at second base and just put his arm around Jackie's shoulder and stood there. And then the fans grew quiet. And I read that Jackie later said that Reese's arm around his shoulder saved his career. I don't know about that. He was an excellent player, but I, I did read that. And that, that scene was very movingly portrayed in the movie 42, subtitled The Jackie Robinson Story, which I highly recommend to you. I've, I've got a, a copy of it if you want to borrow it sometime or see it on, you, I mean, most of you probably have cable. It shows how Jackie Robinson, this movie 42, shows how, he, how Robinson showed incredible grace and courage under the pressure of these terrible racist taunts and threats during his early career, and I'm not sure how long they lasted. And it also has uh, Harrison Ford playing, I believe, his manager and a, and a United Methodist. Uh, and I'm not sure if that part is true, but in the movie he was United Methodist and he supported and encouraged Jackie throughout that ordeal. And that film really truly portrays, portrays Christian love in action in many different ways. I don't know if you've got other favorite movies that do the same for you. Today's epistle lesson is all about love, God's love for us and our love for God and for others. The way I'm going to approach it is to talk more about those verses which may be more difficult to understand or easy to misunderstand. 
In verse 7, the idea that human love finds its ultimate source in God is easy enough to understand, but it's easy to misunderstand John's statement that everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Now, if you simply yanked that verse out of its context, it would be easy to think that anybody, anywhere who loved anybody could be called a child of God and be said to know God. But that's not true biblically speaking, especially according to John's epistle and gospel. First, we should think of John's gospel where, you know, and, and I'm speaking of John as the one who wrote both the gospel and the first, second, and third John. So we should think of John's gospel where John wrote about Jesus saying, yet to all who did receive him, uh, referring to Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the power, or the, excuse me, he gave the right to become children of God, children not born of natural descent. So in other words, you're not a child of God just by being born biologically into the world. Children not born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband will, or a husband's will, but born of God. Next, if we turn to John's first epistle, we can read in chapter 2, verse 22 and 23, these, these words. And, and, and you can see in the way John phrases it that he really goes along with, uh, with Jesus' characterization of him and his brother as sons of thunder. So John wrote, and I quote, Who is the liar? It is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is the Antichrist, who deny, the, denying the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever acknowledges the Son, speaking of Jesus, of course, has the Father also. So given John's writing elsewhere, in, you know, in, in this, John's writing in this gospel and in this letter, John is obviously not saying that anyone of any religion who loves anybody is born of God and knows God. In fact, he is definitely saying that that cannot be true because you must accept Jesus in order to know God. That, G that John is, is talking only about Christians being born of God and knowing God is made explicit when we read as, as Greg did from 1 John chapter 5, verse 1, saying, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Again, John is certainly saying that those who do not, is certainly saying that those who do not know Christ do not know God, especially since his gospel includes, the, includes Jesus saying, I and the Father are one, as well as John, as well as Jesus, excuse me, saying, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And Jesus continued to say, if you really know me, you will know the Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So there is Jesus, you know, in saying that, Jesus was claiming that to know him was to know God. So it follows that those who reject Jesus and faith in him are not born of God and do not know God, at least according to John's gospel. And on this verse, Har Howard Marshall comments, and I want to quote from him. He says, human love, however noble and highly motivated, falls short if it refuses to include the Father and the Son, God and Jesus as the supreme expression, or ex excuse me, the, as the supreme objects of its affection. It falls short of the divine pa pattern and by itself cannot save a person. Love by itself cannot save a person. Love alone is not a sign of being born of God and it cannot compensate for the sin of rejecting God. Moving on to verse 8, in, in John's epistle, John states, whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. Now, this assertion, God is love, is another one that could be easily misunderstood. 
Marshall writes, and I quote, to speak of God as love is not, is not to reduce God to the status of an abstract quality. However, it signifies more than that God loves or that God is loving. For its effect is to claim that all of God's actions are loving. And since love is a personal activity, that statement strongly stresses the personality of God to the fullest extent. God is all loving and equally all holy. And these two characteristics belong together and determine God's actions, end quote. Now, you may know that John described God in different ways elsewhere in his gospel and epistle. So, for example, other than God is love. So, for example, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, we can write, read there that it says God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. And while in John's gospel, chapter 4, verse 24, we can read there that it says God is spirit. And one scholar I read asserts that to say God is love and God is light is to talk about God's character, whereas to say God is spirit is to talk about God's metaphysical nature, the fact that you know God is a nebulous spirit, not an embodied person like we are. And that makes sense to me, as does Stephen Smalley's comments on this verse that I want to share with you as well. Smalley says, and I quote, to assert that God is love does not ignore or exclude the other attributes of God's being to which the Bible as a whole bears witness. Not notably his justice and his truth. But theologically, these cannot be opposed to each other. Such characteristics of God as his justice and his truth must ultimately be related to his essential nature of love. And friends, I, I agree with that. And we can see how those qualities are involved in God sending his one and only son, Jesus, into the world to die on the cross, to be the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the world, sins that God's sense of justice and righteousness demands must be punished. But God, in his great love for us, sent his son to take the punishment for our sins, and that shows the depth and the quality, the self-sacrificial quality of God's love for us. And it is that depth and character of love that we, as Christ followers, are to imitate. Or as John put it in 1 John chapter 4, verse 11, Dear friends, since God so loved us, so we also ought to love one another. At this point, I need to backtrack to make a further comment on verse 8, which reads, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. It makes sense to say that someone who does not love does not know God because if God is love, it means that an essential part of God's character and being is to be a, love, a loving, and if we know nothing of love, we know nothing of God. But please understand, as Smalley notes, and I quote, the reverse is not true. Love is not God. The controlling principle of the universe is not an abstract quality of love, but a sovereign living God who is the source of all love and who as love himself loves. So, my friends, we are to love one another as God has loved us. And furthermore, John also emphatically teaches that while no one has seen God, if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. And that is a very audacious claim, isn't it? How should we understand that, that promise of God's indwelling. It is an amazing promise. 
And you may have noticed I need a lot of help with, with First John and, and Smalley. Stephen Smalley helped me out on this point again. And he wrote, and I quote, when we love others, God's love for us is revealed in its full effect in creating the same kind of love as his in us. It is only when a person has, loves his fellow Christians on a very practical level that he or she fully experiences the love of God in their heart and knows the presence of God within them. John's point is that loving one another is indispensable in a religion which longs to have a true knowledge of God. And love, my friends, is not all that's required of us. So what are the other marks of a Christian that we can see referred to this in this passage from 1 John and elsewhere through the epistle that John, that John outlines for us? First of all, in the next verse, in verse 13, John gives us another proof of living in Christ and living in, in un union with Christ and he in us, which is to say proof that we are truly Christians. He wrote, John wrote, this is how we know that we live in him, in Jesus, in God, and he in us. He has given us of the spirit, of his spirit. And then we should understand then that this, the Holy Spirit helps us to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, sent by God the Father to be the Savior of the world, and that the Holy Spirit will, will also help us to share that belief with others. Recall that in 1 Corinthians, or chapter 12, verse 3, the Apostle Paul wrote this, No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. So faith in Christ is one of the one important but obvious sign that God has given us his spirit and that we are in effect Christians. John then makes a parallel statement in verse 12 that if we love one another God lives in us. A parallel statement to that and that in verse that was verse 12 and the parallel statement is verse 15. He says, if anyone acknowledge that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we can rely on the love that God has for us. So you might ask, which is it? The truth is that much of, of John's first letter is discussing the multiple signs of being a, a true Christian, a real Christian. And they include some from this passage in 1 John. Though, and, and five of them are these marks of a, of a true Christian. Having received the Holy Spirit, the divine indwelling in us. Knowing that the Jesus is the Son of God and has come to be the Savior of the world and believing that, that Jesus came to do that in the person and flesh, or the Son of God came to do that in the person and flesh of Jesus Christ. Another mark of being a Christian is love for fellow Christians and others expressed in tangible ways in both word and deed. Another is love for God shown in obedience to God's commandments. And the final one, sort of like number two, belief that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, who is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. In conclusion, my friends, when we obey God's commandments to love one another as he has loved us, we reflect the character of Christ in doing so and the nature of God the Father himself. And just like biological children of human parents often very closely reflect the physical characteristics of their parents in their faces and their bodies, so should we, as God's spiritual children, born of God, reflect his love in word and deed so that the world can come to know what God is like in part through our own efforts guided by the help of the Holy Spirit. That is our holy task and privilege. May we be about it. Amen.
Let us be in prayer. God, we pray that you would help Carol and all of us who struggle with computers and the internet and, and getting new work or, or pursuing different things uh, and opportunities. Um, we pray that you would bless Carol in that endeavor. Be with all those who are in need of your healing. We lift up Debbie for continued. We thank you for the successful surgery and pray for uh, a fast and easy recuperation from her second hip surgery. We pray for Jeff and Calvin and for all those folks on our prayer list uh, and those who are not on our prayer list um, who are in need of continued healing including those ways in which we ourselves might need your healing blessing of mind or body or spirit. And Lord, we pray for the, all those who struggle with addictions of many kinds, that you might free them from their bondage and release them so that they can experience life in all its abundance and fullness instead of being obsessed with one substance or another or a, a less than life-giving activity. Lord, we pray also for uh, all those who are in need of shelter and food, for those who have fled from violence, for those who are still in war zones, for the Middle East, for Gaza, for the Ukraine, for Sudan, and wherever violence breaks out. We pray for peace, Lord. We pray for all those who are grieving and suffering, the loss of loved ones, the loss of of homes, the loss of, of businesses, the loss of community and connections. We pray, Lord, that you would guide the leaders of our nation and other nations in the path of peace and righteousness and justice, that your will would truly be done on earth. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray to you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Greg will lead us in the offertory prayer. Our collection plates are available at the back of the sanctuary. And let us give this prayer to ask blessings on uh, offerings of all types. Lord Jesus, give us a more charitable spirit, more self-denial, more likeness to you. Teach us to sacrifice our comforts for others' good. Make us kindly in thought, gentle in word, and generous in our giving. Teach us that it is better to give than to receive, better to forget ourselves than to seek our own, better to minister than to be ministered unto. Amen. Don't Jesus. 
turning to page 26. We're not going to do a full four pages. Yeah, don't freak out. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll do parts of it. How's that? Okay. Um, this is a more traditional service. And we will begin by, um, by doing all of, I know we've done this part before. We'll be, we will do all of page um, uh, 26. Starting with page 26. Ye that do earnestly, truly and earnestly repent of your sins are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn to thee, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all sins and confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If one sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the expiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please join me in the great thanksgiving that is found on the bottom of page 27. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. <laughs> it is very meet. <laughs> In other words, well, what is that? Appropriate. Appropriate is very appropriate. It is very meet, right? And our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with all the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by the one offering of himself, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, and didst institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O most merciful Father, we humbly beseech thee, and bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts of bread and wine, that we, receiving them, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his passion, death, and resurrection, may be partakers of the divine nature through him, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when Jesus had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his di disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when in the same night that he was betrayed, likewise after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is set, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood, we and thy whole church may obtain forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we may be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And I guess we will do the prayer of, of humble access as well. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose proper is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to partake of this sacrament of thy Son, Jesus Christ, that we may walk in newness of life, may grow into his likeness, and may ever more dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, Grant us thy peace. Amen. The food of God for the people of God, all is made ready. Come partake. You are loved. You have received. You have received tangible.
tangible signs of God's love for you. So go and be lovers of others. Go and spread the love of God and the joy that you have from knowing you are beloved of God. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you.